You won't believe it, but there's a slider in this bag. Let me show you what it could do. With many sliders, they are expensive and bulky as fuck, especially those motorized ones. So today we're gonna to be playing with the Rhino Rove Pro. I've used Rhino products before, specifically the Rhino Arc Slider, and I loved what that product can do. So happy because they made this minimal, affordable, and portable slider. A portable. A portable, I'm gonna call it a portable from now on. You might be wondering, especially if you've been following this channel for a while now, can't a slider just do the same things a gimbal can? Not exactly, let me explain. Because this is a motorized slider, you could use it as a second camera, and you won't need another camera op to get that movement. It's also great for filming yourself. You can set the speed and also put it on a loop like we're doing right now. Hello, second cam. You already know I'm a fan of macro photography. I also did a tutorial right here if you wanna check it out. But with macro video, you're very limited on camera movements. It's nearly impossible to hit focus with a gimbal because of consistency and accuracy. Unless you're some sort of like gimbal goddess, but Lord knows I'm not blessed with those skills, unfortunately. So we have sliders. Not only do I love macro photography, but I also love some motion time lapse, which is something gimbals can also do. But with a slider, you're gonna get that dolly track reveal shot that you can't do with a gimbal. Now let's show you some example shots, but first, we're gonna have to write a script. And then we gotta set up lights. Begin. Roll the clip. So now that I got my margarita all situated, mm, let's talk more about the slider. Not only can the slider take care of all those previous needs, except for making a margarita, but it's clean up minimalist design makes it easy to do so. It also has a quarter 20 screw and a 3 8 if you wanna attach this to another tripod. It also has adjustable little feetsies. It fits in this backpack that reminds me of the Peak Design charcoal bag. It could hold the slider, mounts, moment lenses, and if you need, some road mics. Don't worry about bringing another charger because this charges with micro USB. And the battery life is 24 hours, so you won't be charging anytime soon. There's also a battery indicator to let you know when you're low. It comes in two sizes. I have the everyday, which is eight inches of track, and then there's also the traveler, which is 16 inches of track. The total weight is just under two pounds. It's really light, and the payload is up to five pounds. And I heard it could even take a little bit more than that. 
if you get the Rove Pro, there's the Rove Mobile for phones and then the Rove Pro. If you get that one, you get the phone mount and also a mirrorless DSLR mount. If you're thinking of using this for time lapse, definitely get the shutter release button. On the website, I saw that it's compatible with Sony, Panasonic, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, but definitely make sure to check on your models. I personally use the A7R3 and it works really good. In order to use it, double tap the power button like you would with a drone and then turn on your Rove Motion app on iOS. Here I will choose camera connection. We'll get to the phone in a minute. You have the choice to use it for live motion or for time lapse. For live motion, you could change the speeds between eight seconds to 28 seconds. Ramp it and set it on a loop. Time lapse mode lets you set how long you want your final clip to be, shutter speeds or duration of time lapse. It even tells you the numbers of photos it will take and what time it'll end at. Don't forget to plug in your shutter release cable. If you're using it with your phone, switch out the mounts. The phone mount also has a cold shoe hidden for added accessories. Speaking of accessories, Rhino also makes a variable ND filter that'll clamp onto your phone, but it won't work if you're gonna use like a moment wide. The phone app has three different speeds and looping. You're also able to manually change the white balance, ISO, and shutter. A cool feature that I wish more phone shooting apps had was this magnifier to focus easier. To delay start, you have a countdown of two, five, 10 seconds, or my favorite is clap. It's so much fun. <laughs> I wish the camera side had it as well. If you're new to the slider world, here are a few tips. Make sure that you have foreground, it is imperative. Because if you're moving with a slider on a wide, you're not gonna tell that it's moving at all. So definitely have something like a wall or the floor or ground, an object, pretty much anything so you can see that movement between the background and the foreground. Even on the everyday slider with just eight inches of track, you can see a lot of movement. Don't forget, it doesn't just need to be sideways motions only. You could go diagonal, you could do some push-ins and push-outs. Mix it up a bit. Another tip if you're gonna go diagonal, use a lighter setup. I tried the A7R3 with the G Master 24 to 70, and it took me a while, it did eventually go, but once it stopped at the top, it was slowly dragged down, because it was a little bit too much weight. While the app is intuitive and very easy to use, it only is on iOS, unfortunately. They said they're gonna have an Android version by the end of the year. Cross those fingers, cause you know I'm a Pixel fan. I also wish the app would remember your settings. So if you exit the app or turn off the Rove and come back in and connect it, it's gonna go to default settings. So you'll have to redo everything if you're very specific. And I'm always specific. <laughs> Lastly, because this is a phone app dependent product, you can't move it manually with your hands. So it requires a little bit more patience for setup. You can't just manhandle it. You could, but I could tell I tried pushing it and I wasn't very happy. However, I love what this slider can do and its design. It allows videographers and time-lapse fanatics to be able to afford something without sacrificing on functions and quality. You won't need two tripods or two light stands to keep it level and steady, and there's no balancing required. It held my A7R 3 with my 24 to 70 G Master lens. I use that for a lot of things. And the small HD focus monitor. I can't wait to use it on more interview shoots. Note, however, if you're not gonna be using a lav mic or an external audio recorder, that you should keep it around like 25 to 28 seconds so you won't pick up on any motor noise. All in all, I love being able to create controlled movements that are consistent and accurate even on a macro lens. Now I have another way of creating simple and dynamic movement shots. For current prices on this affordable slider, check the links down below. Thanks for hanging out with me. Find me on IG because I post there on the daily. You do you fam and I'll see you when I see you. Mm, done. Ew. So now I got that, 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 that. And they got a vitamin to be the meta gibbon. I should do more YouTubes on tequila. I'm gonna go to the club. The club's open right now. I'm ready to party.